a cubic function, we are shown that x cubed plus p x squared plus q x plus k has x minus 1 and x plus 1 as what? Factors. So if x minus 1 and x plus 1 are factors, it means that if we should divide x minus 1 by, okay, if we should divide this expression by x minus 1, we'll get a remainder of what? Zero. And remember, the factor or the remainder term says that if that is the case, then we can put f of 1, okay? So we can say the first thing I'm going to say is let p of x be equal to this polynomial x cubed plus p x squared. Okay, because there's p here, let's use f of x. Let f of x be equal to x cubed plus p x squared. Okay, p x squared plus q x plus k. Okay, now if I should put f of 1, okay, if x minus 1 is equal to 0, and I find x minus, if x minus 1, which is a factor, is equal to 0, it means x is equal to 1. So it means if I should put f of 1, I'll get a remainder of 0. So if x minus 1 is a factor, then it means f of 1. So since x minus 1 is a factor, then f of 1 should give us 0. Okay? So let's go. f of 1, if f of x is equal to this, then f of 1, wherever we see x, we put what? 1. So we shall get 1 cubed plus p into 1 squared plus q times 1 plus k is equal to 0. So this will give us 1 plus p plus q plus k is equal to 0. Then we have p plus q plus k is equal to negative 1. We call this equation 1. Okay? Now again, we are told that x plus 1 is also a factor. So if we have x plus 1 equal to 0, it means x is equal to what? negative 1. So if x plus 1 is also a factor, it means f of negative 1 should be equal to 0. So since x plus 1 is a factor, then it follows that f of negative 1 should give us what? 0. Okay? So if f of x is equal to this, then f of negative 1, we shall have negative 1 all cubed plus p times negative 1 all squared plus q times negative 1 plus k should also be equal to 0. Why? Because it is a factor. That's why it is equal to 0. Okay? So when we solve this, we give us negative 1. Then negative 1 all squared will give us positive 1. So plus p. Then this will give us minus q plus k is equal to 0. So p minus q plus k is equal to, the negative 1 moves to the right, we get positive 1. This is equal to equation 2. Okay? Now, we are told that x minus 2 has a remainder of what? 12. So if x minus 2 is also equal to 0, then it means x is equal to 2. And that will leave us a remainder of what? 12. So since x minus 2 leaves a remainder of 12, leaves a remainder of 12, using the remainder theorem, remainder of 12, then it means that f of 2, f of 2 will be equal to what? 12. f of x, so if f of x is equal to x cubed plus p x squared plus q s plus k, then f of 2 will give us so we have f of 2 to be equal to 12, we shall have 2 cubed plus p into 2 squared plus q times 2 plus k to be equal to what? 12, because f of 2 is equal to 12, okay? So this will give us 8 plus 4p plus 2q plus k is equal to 12. 4p plus 2q plus k is equal to 12 minus 8, which will give us 4, okay? So we call this equation 3. Now, if we have our equation, p plus q plus k is equal to negative 1, as our equation 1, and then p minus q plus k to be equal to 1, as our equation 2. So this is simultaneous equation in three variables. And when you are given simultaneous equation in three variables, normally the best thing to do is to eliminate one of the variables in either equation, okay? 
So when you are able to eliminate one of the variables, then it becomes easier for you to solve it by getting another simultaneous equation in two variables. So when we watch equation three and equation one, we realize that this is k and this is k. So if we should subtract equation three from equation one or equation one from equation three, we realize that our k will go away, okay? So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to subtract, let's say, equation three, equation three minus equation one. Four p minus p will give us three p, two q minus q will give us q, and then k minus k will give us zero. And then four minus, minus one will give us positive five. Let's name this equation four. So now that we have used equation three and equation one, okay, we can use equation three and one again. We can either use equation three and equation two or equation one and equation two. So let's use equation one and two. Now let's assume that we want to eliminate k again, okay? So we are going to subtract equation two from equation one or equation one from equation two. So we have equation one minus equation two. So we are subtracting. So P minus P is zero. Q minus, minus Q will give us two Q. K minus K is zero. And minus one minus one will give us minus two. So this has even brought us a value for Q, okay? So we can solve for Q easily, where we divide both sides by what? Two. So our Q will be equal to what? Negative one, okay? Now if Q is equal to negative one, we can put it into equation four to get the value of P. So put Q equals to negative one into equation four, okay? So we shall have three P plus minus one is equal to five, okay? We are solving for P. So 3P um, is equal to 5 plus 1, okay? 3P is equal to 6. P is equal to 2. So if we have been able to find the value of Q and P, now it's left with K. So we can put P equals to 2 and Q equals to negative 1 into equation 1 to get the value of what? K. So we are putting it into equation one to get the value of k. So getting k into equation one, we have p plus q. So our p is what? Two. So two plus, our q is also what? Negative one. Minus one plus k is equal to minus one. So I have p plus q plus k is equal to minus one, which is p plus q plus k equals to minus one. Let me solve for k. So two minus one will give us one plus k is equal to minus one. K is equal to minus 1 minus 1. K is equal to minus 2. So therefore, finding the values of P, Q, and K, we have been able to solve for them. So therefore, we have our P to be equal to 2, Q to be equal to negative 1, and K to be equal to what? Negative 2. So this brings us to the end of polynomials. I will expect you to solve some more examples under polynomials. Until we meet again next time. Bye.